Hey guys. Hey guys. We miss you all. We love you guys and we hope you're doing well. Um, we cannot wait for us all to be back together, um, back at church and worshiping and having fun and fellowship together. But until then, make sure that you guys are checking out our CS Kids Facebook page. We post the Word on Wednesday, which is our main devotion for the week. And then on Sunday, we have what we call Make It Stick Sunday. So, and our Sunday message is a tie-in to our Wednesday night lesson. So make sure that you guys are checking that out. It's just a way to keep you guys engaged and plugged in and continually growing deeper with the Lord. Even though we're in the midst of this crazy time, we still pray for you guys. We are still thinking about you guys and we are always here if you need us. Just feel free to reach out, um, contact us however you can. And be sure you're checking your mailboxes next week. Next week is when we're gonna have our monthly mail out going. So those will be hitting up soon. And we've got some fun things planned up coming in October. So stay tuned and we'll be announcing that soon. Miss you guys. See Love you. Again. Bye. Hey, good morning, church family. I hope and pray that you're doing well. I hope you've had a good week in the Lord. Just know that you've been thought about and uh, you've been prayed for. Man, we, uh, we're just missing you guys so much uh, here on campus, but know that we're thinking about you and you're in our hearts. And uh, thank you for keeping us updated on many of the situations of where people are and uh, what they're going through. So bless you, bless you, bless you. So uh, again, know that we're thinking about you and our hearts and prayers and thoughts are with you. Our numbers continue to grow. To those who have had COVID-19 or do have COVID-19, those, number, those numbers continue to spike. And so, again, until further notice, until we can reevaluate and just see where we are, uh, we think we need to stay on this particular course. And so thank you again for understanding that and praying for leadership and, and all the people who are involved uh, in the life of our church. We'll try to keep you updated as much as we can on the names and those that we know of who are going through a hard time, okay? Hey, just some quick reminders. Uh, also, on some of the uh, broadcasts that we'll be giving, you're gonna be hearing from worship uh, leaders, uh, helpers, ministry people, so pray for them. Uh, Chrissy, Rihanna, Eric, and, and hopefully here for long, Brother Keith will be back. So you'll be hearing some news from other people than just myself. And we're excited about that. We appreciate them participating in this and just keeping you connected and aware of what's going on. Pray for our schools as they continue to engage and, uh, and, and just ask God to bless them. Pray for our nation and our leaders and uh, continue to pray for who's your one. I don't know who you're praying for, but uh, just remind you of that. Uh, wh whoever it is that God put on your heart, we talked about that uh, last Easter. Whoever it is that, that God's laid on your heart to pray for them. Um, ask the Lord to bless them that they'll come to know Christ. Thank you again for your love for ETA, Earl Trent Assembly, and your gifts that you gave. So bless, bless, bless. Brother Eddie sent a word to us and said that they've already collected over $46,000. To God be the glory, and thank you for that, okay? Hey, along with that, let me give you some prayer updates and things that are going on, okay? Um, Adam Davis is recovering good. Keith Owens and his whole family. Uh, David and Lisa Hamlin, David is home, recovering. Beth and Bobby Clemens, I pray for Bobby. His mom is in the hospital. She has COVID and uh, she is not doing well. And so pray for uh, Bobby and his family as they uh, are going through this very difficult time. So please pray for them. Uh, Elena Pettis has it. Pray for the Myrick family, for Cindy Hood, for Kylie and Kate Yarborough, for Rick and Amy Ritchie. Uh, ask the Lord to please be with them. The Roden family, Marcus and Eva Roden, the Linville family. And so, man, as you can see, uh, this thing is just growing. So please ask the Lord to be with these dear people. Um, hey, here's just some others. Joan Hammond continues to go to the cancer center. And uh, each week she just says, please pray for me. So ask the Lord to bless Joan. Doris Tunnel, uh, Miss Doris and Jean, if you're listening, God bless you. Pray for you, sis. And the Lord be with you during this very difficult, unprecedented time. Okay. Here's some other prayer concerns about people. Um, David Marcuse's aunt passed away. We shared that on Wednesday, but just want to make sure you're aware of that. Jimmy Solly's aunt 
passed away. And then Brittany Mitchell's grandmother lives in South Carolina, passed away. And so those are ones who are facing bereavement and difficult moments in their lives. So continue to pray for them uh, and ask God to be with them. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of, of, of this online event. And thank you for the good, encouraging words that we get every week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It certainly helps. But we're here just to encourage you. And we, we want you to know that the Lord uh, is still work. His, working. His hand is not shortened. That he cannot do what he wants to do. And so please do not uh, forget that. Remember that he is still on the throne. And that he is still working to God be the glory. So church family, again, from our heart to yours. Bless you, praying for you. Hey, do want to remind you of this, and I've got to do it once if you would like for me to come, uh, or one of our deacons will be glad to come to your house and help you to observe the Lord's Supper. Now, two or three things here. We will wear masks and gloves or we, and safe distance, or we'll just hand you the stuff that you need if you would like to do it in your home with your family. We totally understand that. So whatever you need to do there, uh, the Lord bless you, okay? So ask God to to just lead you in that direction. All you need to do is call Jackie at the office. Uh, she is here from Monday through Thursday, nine to one, and she'll set up the time. She'll check my schedule, check with you, see when we can coordinate, and then we'd love to come to your house and do that, okay? Hey, one, one other just item of interest, let me remind you that uh, even though we're no longer online campusing right now, we still continue uh, and, and hate to do, but, but we still need your support. So. Uh, make sure you go online. Make sure you drop it off at the box. Uh, your banking, ever how you choose to do that. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness to give to the work of God. We're still trying to help people and, and to connect and minister in any way that we can. And so your faithful support means a lot. The, the bills continue to come in. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness to be obedient to Jesus in your uh, understanding of what it means to be a Christian, to walk with him. And a part of that is being obedient with your money and so thank you for faithfulness in that area okay well dear family let's pray for these that we've mentioned there are many many people you know that won't go through that list again so let's be sure to pray for them and again if you have a prayer concern or prayer list we need to know about uh, you please call us and let us know we'll get it on the mail out we'll do it wednesday night we'll do a little bit more of that on wednesdays and so you can uh, kind of connect with us on that okay our Heavenly Father, we love you, we thank you, and we bless you for your goodness and God, your grace. And we pray for the family, the body of Christ, those, God, who have been infected by this pandemic, that, Lord, you would touch their bodies. God, you would heal them. You would supply what they need. Uh, Father, I even pray that they'd get to the right medical facilities, to the right personnel. And, God, I pray that, Lord, you would bring healing into their body. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're not caught off guard by this. And so, Father, you know right where we are, what we're going through, and in, even in this difficult moment, God, you're speaking to us. I want to thank you for the faithfulness of your people to give during this time. And God, I pray you continue to bless that. So, Lord, as we open the word, open our heart. God, may we be receptive. Uh, as John said, may we read the word, may we hear the word, but may we keep the word. So, God, open our hearts so that we might hear the reading of the word and that God, uh, and as only you can, I pray that you would impact our lives with your truth. So, Father, you receive all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning again. Hey, turning your Bibles to Revelation chapter 1. Hey, we're going to do about a five-book chapter, or about five chapters of the book of Revelation. I'm going to scan about three of them, and then we're going to kind of land in one for just a little while. Hey, remind you that we talked about how that reading and hearing and keeping the book of Revelation is a blessing, and that's what we entitled this, The Blessing of Understanding What God Has Said. And we talked about the past, how that God said in Daniel there'd be a time that the revelation would be revealed, and that time has come, that God has released, uh, as Daniel put it in a scroll and sealed it up. We have the unsealing, the apocalyptus, the unveiling of the truth given to John on the Isle of Patmos. And so we have the book of the Revelation as a result of that. And then we talked about what truths would be revealed. And over the last two weeks, I've talked about the central character of the book, that's Jesus. The purpose of the book, to comfort God's people. And that's the third one, that we would understand the book of Revelation was to comfort his people during a very difficult, hard time. When this book was written, many of the believers were dying. And so he, he wrote this in light of circumstances historically 
that God would bless his people. But then the last one, I, I haven't had a chance to really delve into this one real later, and that's the certain prophecy of the book. So the person is Jesus, the purpose, uh, the, the, the promise, but then there is the prophecy of the book. What's going on? So we're starting to get into that prophetic truth, the unveiling. And then I want you to see this, the treasures that you would be rewarded. He said you'd be blessed. That's a treasure from God if you heard. Now, when he wrote that word, hear the, hear the word, it's a little bit different than what you and I think of today. Because actually, uh, when John wrote the book, the Lord commanded him, commissioned him to write to the seven churches. And so when he said, when you read the book, literally that word in the Greek means when you read out loud the book. In other words, they didn't come to church with Bibles. They didn't have a Bible. And so what they heard was the man of God getting up and reading out loud the word. So here's what happened. The seven churches of Asia Minor were to receive this letter from John. And when they received it, they were to literally to read out loud, to, to exhort the people to hear the word. And they were to hear it as it was read, and then they were to keep those things that were written therein. And so that special promise, that treasure of knowing that we have heard God proclaim His truth. Thank God we have a Bible down. All the people said, yes, thank God I have a copy of the Word of God. They didn't. And so as we read the book, as we hear the book, and then as we learn to keep that book. Hey, today we're going to start that, uh, we, we did a thing understanding that God had a plan. Remember the past, the promise, Daniel uh, 12, 4. The past will seal it up. The promise is at the right time I'm going to unveil it. He has. And then there's the plan that would be revealed in the book of Revelation. And that's where we are today. The revealing or the unveiling of God's truth. I have three things I want to share with you today. And again, we're going to cover Revelation 1, parts of it, 2, 3, and then end in chapter 5. But if you have your Bible, Revelation 1, Revelation 1, verse 4. We're going to read through verse 8. I'm going to make some comments and then get right into some particular uh, prophetical things that hopefully God is helping us in this day. So let's, let's read the word as they did then. Read aloud the word of God. Let's read it. John to the seven churches which are in Asia Minor. So we see the, the, the purpose. He's writing to these seven churches, the believers of Christ then. Grace to you and peace from God uh, from who he is and who was and is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Those seven spirits are found in Isaiah uh, chapter 11, verse 2. Spirit of knowledge, spirit of wisdom, spirit of strength. And what he's referring to there is the completeness of the Holy Spirit, how he comes into our life. He'll mention that again in chapter 5, that there are seven functions of the Holy Spirit to bring wisdom, to bring strength and might, and to give us the power to live the Christian faith and so forth and so on. And then he says, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. This is important. The faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. He reminded them, Caesar may be in control in Rome, but God is on his throne in heaven. Hallelujah to the people. Do you hear that, church? Man, you say, Pastor, what's going on in the world and all the political and economical and social stuff? Hey, there may be a lot of stuff going on in Washington, D.C. at the White House and at the courthouse. But I'm going to tell you, there's God's kingdom and there's heaven and he's on the throne. And he says... The one who is over all the rulers of the earth. To this one and only to this one. To him who loved us, who washed us from our sins in his own blood. What a wonderful statement. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him and only him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And, and then these last two verses. Kind of listen in now. Behold he's coming with clouds. And every eye will see him. And even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I'm the Alpha, the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end, says the Lord. And then he gives us those three time frames. Who is, who was, and is to come. And then they give him this title, the Almighty One. Now remember, Revelation chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 presents the church age. And after that, the church is gone. We believe, as, as we said last week, I hope you've gathered, you heard that message, the rapture, the rescue of the church. So the church is gone. But before it leaves, there's some things God is doing. What's he doing, Pastor Ron? Well, number one, God's presenting his plan from the past to the present to the future. Literally what he says, what he has done, 
what he is doing and what I'm going to do. Remember what he says? Now listen very carefully. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the word who is and who was and is to come. And so he shows us his prophetic plan time-wise. All the way from the past to the present to the future, God has spoken. God is speaking and God will speak. Don't forget that. God in Revelation is unveiling his plan, what he's going to do now and then what he's going to do in the future and also what has happened in the past. Do not forget that. So God is presenting his prophetical plan to his people who are in dire distress, who are in difficult moments of their life. And he's reminding them that he is the faithful one. He's the beginning and the end. I was dead. They, cured, they killed me. But God brought me back to life. The Almighty One who has all power, all authority, and ultimately, you need to hear this sovereignly, has all control. He's over all the kings of the earth. So he's presenting his prophetic divine plan. But number two, and I really want you to see this, and I want you to hear this. Beginning in chapter 1, verse 9, through the end of chapter 3, he's preparing his people. Now you need to hear this, church. Hear me now. Hear me now. Not only is he presenting a plan, now he is preparing his people. And remember what he does? He goes through those seven churches and he names each one. And each one he gives a, 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 a plus or a, a minus. You remember that? He began. And man, he's talked about the church at Ephesus and Sardis. And he went through all of those. And we're not going to break those churches down specifically other than to say this before he comes. He wants his bride to be ready. He wants us to be spotless, to be walking in truth. Thessalonians says there's going to be a great falling away, a purging, and that God will present to himself a pure, holy bride. Well, Revelation 1, 9, through Revelation 3, the end of the book, it is preparing his people. And he gives us the reason why we ought to be prepared, because of who Jesus is. John said in John chapter 14, I am God. Remember what he told him? If you see me, you've seen God. And here's the image that he gives. Because of who I am, that's the way you ought to live. Now remember what he says? He who loved us, he who saved us. And then he gives Jesus three titles. I want you to see these. First of all, it says from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. Jesus was faithful in how he lived. Are we faithful? Jesus was true to his character. Are we? We're born again, spirit-filled, Bible-believing Christians. Can the world see a testimony, a witness to the grace of God in our life? Jesus was the faithful witness to show us how to live. And so as we prepare for this moment, for the return of the Lord, the rapture of his church, man, we ought to be living as a faithful follower of Christ, a witness to the testimony of the grace of God. Well, what can I testify to? I'll tell you this, he loved me. I'll tell you this, he washed me. Do you know that? I heard a cute little story about a guy in the paper and he put a, an ad in the paper that he lost his dog and he said if you see him you can tell who he is because he used to have manes real bad and there's some bare spots on his body he says also you can tell who my dog is is by the way he walks he limps because he was hit by a car he also has arthritis so he can't move real fast he's he's kind of slow and so he gave all these descriptions and, and then get this are you with me church and said his name is lucky <laughs> well Mange, hit car, arthritis, we could debate that. Hey, can I say something? We're not a lucky dog. We're a blessed believer in Christ. Because of what God has done in this world, you and I can say praise be to the Lamb of God, for He and He alone has been merciful. Do you understand that? God chose to demonstrate His love towards you, and God poured out His mercy on you. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, go read it. So he loved you. He washed you. Hey, he saved you. So we ought to be preparing ourselves for that moment. Remember that Jewish wedding we used? For the moment when the bride sees the groom. Anticipation. Excitement for that moment. So I want to ask you today. Are you preparing? Are you living in such a way that it is showing the world? Testifying to the world that you're living for God. He's the faithful witness. He goes on to say he's the firstborn of the dead. That represents his power. The picture to the world is we're a faithful witness, but the power was demonstrated in the fact that, listen, that God took Jesus, who was in the grave, and God raised him up by his power. 
The same thing happened to you and me when we got saved. God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, slew the old man, raised a new man. So I've been raised in the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. God's preparing His people. Hey, I was in a conference last week up in Branson, Missouri, and a guy made a comment. He said, could it be that God is using COVID-19? Now, I want you to get this. I'm not saying that He is. He just brought the thought up. Could it be that God is using COVID-19 to, pre to prepare the church, to purge the church? Because he said many will not come back after this. Wow. So could it be a separating? Could it be a time where God is pruning and preparing his bride to meet him? I'm not saying that it is, but I'm saying we ought to be living in such a way that it demonstrates to the world that we too, like Christ, have been spiritually raised from the dead. He's a faithful witness but he's the firstborn from the dead. You and I too have passed from death unto life. For by grace you've been saved. Remember that through faith, that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, as we should boast. And so he's presenting this picture to the world. God has presented his plan, but then God says, I need to get my people ready. And maybe that's what he's doing today. Hear the Holy Spirit. Would you do that? Listen to what God is saying. I want to say this again too. Not only is he the faithful witness, not only is he the firstborn of the dead. Look in verse 8. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. And then he uses the word of the Greek alphabet. <clears throat> I'm the beginning and the end. He is the first and he is the last. So he is the faithful witness. He demonstrated us how to live. He is the firstborn from the dead, the power of the resurrection. But then he says, I am the first and the last, indicating that he is everything that you and I need from beginning to end and everything in the middle. So he is a faithful witness. He is the firstborn of the dead, but he is the first and he is the last. So church, as we go through Revelation chapter 1, 9, chapter 2, chapter 3, he, he begins to describe these churches. Some people say these are church ages. In other words, we're going to go through seven. And by the way, you know as well as I do that the book of Revelation is a book of sevens. There's seven spirits. There's seven lampstands. There's seven bowls. Seven trumpets. There's seven sevens. And we'll discuss some of that as it's pertinent. Uh, and, and some of that has historical relevance to why John wrote the book. And so we'll share a little bit of that. But as he does that, he reminds us that we're going through these ages and he each church, again, he gave a plus or a minus. Do you remember the last one? The Laodicean church. Hey, 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 are you listening? The lukewarm church. And so when this was read out into the churches, the seven churches, he got up and he said, the Spirit said to me to tell you that you're lukewarm and that you're not serving God. The faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the first and the last. So church, wherever we are in our spiritual journey, let's make sure that we're preparing ourselves to meet Him as He is getting ready to come for us. So God presented a plan in Revelation. God's preparing His people, Revelation chapter 1, 9 through Revelation chapter number 3. All those churches are indicators that you and I need to be aware. The Nicolaitans and, and on and on we could go. The lukewarm. He said, I wish you were cold or hot. And man, I'll spew you out of, your, out of my mouth. Your influence will be gone. Again, I'll let you go read those seven churches. You can break those down. Each one has a word particular for that particular location historically. And how that uh, God even uses those words then, uh, the truth then, to speak to us even today. So he is presenting a plan. He is preparing his people. But in chapter 4 and 5, we see something happen. You remember what happens in chapter 4? Can I read it for you? Now, he, again, he, he told the people, get ready, I'm coming. So to all the seven churches, whatever historical sim symbolism or, or truth there is there, hey, beware of this, watch out for that, thank you for doing this, don't be lukewarm. And then listen to what he said. Behold, after these things I looked, and a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet saying with me, come up here, rapture, the removal of, or the rescuing of God's people. And I will show you things which must take place after this. The past, the present. But now I'm fixing to show you my plan for the future. He's going to unveil, uncover, 
make known, reveal his plan for the future. But in chapter 4 and 5, before the church exits, we see this. God's people praising the Lamb. So he's preparing a plan. He's, I'm um, excuse me, he's presenting a plan, preparing a people. Now we see God's people praising him. And man, if you begin, he said, immediately I was in the spirit and I was at the throne. And there's some things happened at the throne that I want you to see. There's three particular things that I want you to see. You can go read chapter four. It talks about the throne and the lightnings and man, they're just this beautiful scene. And, and we might want to call this uh, the scenes of heaven. The scenes of heaven. Because God's people began to praise Him. Now I believe that chapter 4 and chapter 5, uh, very possibly, I think very likely, are a panoramic view of the future. Because I said, I'm going to show you what's going to happen in the future. And so he sees the future where God's people have already been rescued into heaven. They're before the throne of God. And the myriads of millions throughout the ages, all the way back from Adam to the last person that will get saved before the trumpet. He sees all those people there, a panoramic view of heaven. He saw everyone through all the ages who would be saved. He saw the 20 and 4 elders. He saw the beast. He saw the seven spirits again. He saw the throne. But man, there's some things here that you and I need to see that we don't need to miss. So we're going to heaven. You ready to go? You ever been to heaven? Here it is. I was in the spirit. God opened the door in the heaven. Here we go. You ready to be transported, translated? John said, the Spirit said, come up here with me. Wow. God wants you to be with Him one day. Do you know that? But to do that, you've got to start preparation now. God presented a plan, but God's preparing people. And now we see heaven that is full of praise. Again, chapter 4 gives us an introduction to heaven, what's going on. But in chapter 5, the scene shifts. Something happens that disturbs heaven. It's interesting. I want you to see this. Chapter 5, verse 1. And then I saw the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll. There that scroll is again. Go back to Daniel 12. Some people think this scroll is the deed to earth. Could be. Written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. There's that word seven again. Completeness, fullness. Verse 2. Then I saw a strong angel proclaim with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven, no one on earth, and no one under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. And I wept much. John began to cry in heaven because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or even to look at it. Man, listen to this. But one of the elders, the 20 and 4 elders, remember that? Some people think that 24 number ref references maybe the 12 leaders of the tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. 24. Uh, man, I'm not guessing. I think that's a pretty good accurate account. But one of those elders came over to John after he saw this scene that broke his heart. Listen to what happened. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open or to even touch the scroll. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold the line of the tribe of Judah. Well, you're in heaven. Guess who you're going to see? Behold the, the line, the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And I looked and behold in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders, the 24 elders and these four living creatures, I saw a lamb standing and the lamb looked at it had been slain, that death mark that was upon him, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the world, all the world, excuse me. So we, we see this picture now in heaven and I want to kind of give you the scene of heaven. Hey, it's interesting that when John saw this particular messenger, he fell at his feet. You remember that? Chapter 4. And he said, get up. By the way, same thing happened to Daniel. When Daniel saw and heard this, he fell on his face. And John saw and heard, he fell on his face. Maybe that's an indication that you and I need to be on our face before God more. Hey, I know I do. Asking God to help me to be the person that he wants me to be. That we need heaven's help. But, but in this <clears throat> scene... In heaven, there's at least three things. I want to break them down for you. Verse 2 through verse 7, John sees what I'm going to call the victorious lamb. Now, so, so they have a, a dilemma in heaven, and that is, here's a scroll, but it's sealed up. Daniel 12, 4. And so in order 
For us to see what's on the inside, somebody has to loose the scroll, unseal it, to reveal what's on the inside. And John said that the angel said, who's worthy? Now, they're, they're making a point here. So, everybody in heaven stood silent. In heaven, no one was worthy. Abraham was not worthy. Paul was not worthy. No one in heaven was found worthy to open the scroll. Man, do you see this? Then he came to the earth. Anybody on earth? Any candidates? How about it, president? How about it, head of whatever? Supreme Court justices? Whoever you may be. Not, not being mean-spirited there. Just saying, in heaven no one and on earth no one. And then the elder said, don't weep. Don't you cry. Because there's one who's worthy. Thank God for the Lamb. Church, you ought to be shouting right now. You ought to move your couch back and just have your spell and thank God for the Lamb. Amen? So when we get to heaven, remember the, the, the main character of the book is the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, here's the Lamb who was dead. Remember that? But now am alive. Go back to chapter 1. So he is the victorious Lamb. If I can put it this way, he's the overcoming one. He overcame death, hell, and the grave. To secure for you and for me salvation and the right to belong to the body of Christ. The only way he washed us and loved us in his precious blood was because he is the lamb that was victorious. The new covenant, Hebrews, is better than the old. Only one reason why. John saw in heaven. What did he see? He saw a lamb. Hey, I got good news for you. When you and I go to heaven, we're going to see the lamb. Hey, I heard an interesting conversation. Uh, Little fellow was kind of being, being snide. And he asked the preachers, hey, when we get to heaven, are we going to see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? And he said, yes. All three? He said, yes. He said, aren't they just one? And he said, yes. So we're going to see three or one? He said, yes. He said, what is it? Three or one? He said, yes and yes. Hey, God's God. And he'll present himself as he will. But in chapter 5 of Revelation, the main character of the book is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who was victorious. It looked as if he had been slain. Hell thought they had him, but heaven picked him up. Wow. Thank be to God. Can I remind you of this? Hey, are you with me? Heaven's on your side. So with all the fear, with all the doubt, with everything that's going on in the world today, praise be to the Lamb of God. He is worthy. So what did he see? He saw the Lamb. Hey, what did he hear? Look in verse number 8. I think this is verse 8 through 13. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders all fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. Here it is. You are worthy to take the scroll, to open its seals, for you were slain, but you have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, every tongue, every people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God and on the earth. Verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Even seven things describe the Lamb in heaven's song. So when you get to heaven, you're going to see the Lamb. Three or one. Yes. But you're going to hear heaven's song. Man, in heaven, we're going to sing. We're going to praise the Lamb of God. We're going to give glory to the rightful one, not a person, not a preacher, but to the Lamb of God, the only one worthy in heaven, earth, or under the earth to open the scroll and to receive honor and to receive glory. So in heaven, he saw the victorious Lamb. In heaven, he heard a glorious song. But, but I want you to see this, verse, beginning in verse 13 to the remainder of the book. Notice his experience. Not only do you see the Lamb, not only do you hear the song, but you experience glorious worship. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, let's read the Bible. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea, all that are in them I heard say about the Lamb, blessings and honor and glory and power. Be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Now remember at the beginning I said this is a panoramic view. So he sees the, the whole scene of heaven. Now watch this carefully. Then the four living creatures said amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever and ever. So they saw the lamb. They heard the song. 
but they experienced what I want to call divine worship. You know, we try to worship here, but we time, you know, we're worried about what's going on. We get hungry. We get tired. We, we, we can easily say, hey, I've heard that before. There's so many, if I can use the word distractions down here, in heaven there will be no distractions. Thank God. And so we will be able to unhindered, uncumbered, we will be able to come before the throne of God and worship the Lamb with everything that's within us. Wow. Hey, I love a good worship song, a good worship service. Man, where people are singing with their heart. Matter of fact, I'd almost rather experience great biblical singing than hear a word. Even though I believe in the exhortation of the word, you get saved by the hearing of the truth, the word of God. But man, I love it when God's people in unison sing, worthy is the Lamb. Man, man, can you imagine bringing all God's people together? And this massive chorus, the lamb who had been slain, victorious. And all of the ages, the people of God, all the tribes of the earth, by the way, remember that, from every tongue and every tribe, will begin to sing. I love when I go to third world countries. And here's why, and I'm not being ugly or critical, but they worship without worrying about what people think. They're very animated in their worship. Now, I know you don't have to be animated. I understand that. But I'll tell you what, friend, when you're redeemed by the Lamb of God, raised from the dead spiritually in the likeness of Christ, it ought to make you want to say something, don't you think? That your life not only is a testimony to who He is, but Lord, I love you and I praise you. Can you imagine when you get to heaven, no worries, no sorrows, no pain. We're going to be able to unhindered, uncumbered, lift up the Lamb of God who was slain from the foundation of the world. Dear church, I'm calling us to worship right where you are right now. Why don't you just begin to say, thank you, Lord. I praise you, God. I bless you, Lord Jesus. You've been so good to me and to my family. Thank you, God, for all you've done. God, for all you're going to do, Lord. I look forward to the day when I meet you face to face. And God, may I live in such a way now as to present you to the world as the lamb who was sacrificed but victorious over the grave. Why don't you right now just say, thank you, God, for my family. Thank you for my finances. Thank you, God, for how you provided. Lord, I bless you and I praise you. Most of all, I thank you. I'm not a lucky dog. I'm a blessed child of God. If you can say that with all your heart, friend, you got a blessing. So blessed is he who hears, reads, and obeys or keeps the words of this prophecy. Chapter 2 and 3 is getting the church ready. Present yourself. Chapter 1, he reveals the plan. But in chapter 4 and 5, a lot of shouting, a lot of praising, a lot of thank, thanksgiving, thankfulness is going on in heaven. Are you ready for that? You need to be getting ready. How can I do that, Pastor? Today, ask the Lord to help you, to renew you, revive you. Man, you know in your heart whether you're right with God, walking with Him in the Spirit. If you're not, then won't you say, Lord, help me today to understand your plan. God, prepare me for that day when I'll meet you. But Lord, I want to be a part of the, that, that throng of people who praise you throughout eternity. Worthy is the Lamb to receive honor and glory and power and majesty and strength. Church, we ought to shout amen and hallelujah. Blessings to the Lamb of God. So we're getting ready for the horsemen. You know who they are? Four horsemen. They're going to ride. We're getting ready for that, but before that, <clears throat> we need to get ready to meet the Lord because in chapter 4, heaven opened and we get to go home. I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready. Some call it heaven. I call it home. Are you ready for that? If you're not, you need to be getting ready. Hey, bless you guys. I'm praying for you to our next Bible study Wednesday night. We're talking about the bumps we grow on or walk on. Hope you'll stay with me. Uh, last week, we talked about the Apostle Paul as he got ready to meet the Lord. Uh, in his death, 2 Timothy. And, and so maybe there's something in your heart that you just need to deal with there. Hey, next Sunday we'll continue this walking in the book of the Revelation. We're going to see a great war. We, we've, we've seen worship. We've seen a witness. We've seen the word. Now we're going to see war. We're going to see unholy war. We're going to meet the unholy trinity. We're going to see an unholy war. God's going to reveal his plan. Hope you're ready. Hey, I hope you like our new little setup back here. I want to thank... Uh, Jackie and Dina and Pastor Eric for helping us get this all ready. They did uh, a lot of the work in, in doing this, and I just appreciate their spirit, willingness to work and to pull all this together. So uh, thank you guys for your blessings for doing this. I like it. Hope it looks good. Hope you're well. 
No, we're praying for you. No, the Lord of heaven is on your side. Remember that, please. He's on your side. And so when these difficulties come, as it did in A.D. 100, massive persecution. They believed in he who is, who was, but is to come. So will you trust him? Hey, bless you. Again, we will be regularly reevaluating where we are, but at this time, we're still seeing many cases break out. Hey, pray for Bobby Clemens. His mom is really close to the point of death. Uh, she has COVID. She's in the hospital. So pray for Bobby and them, and Lord bless them. And Bobby, we love you, and we're lifting you through the throne of grace, buddy. And pray you. Hey, Pastor Keith, if you're listening, feel better, man. We miss you. We love you, buddy. Pray for Leah, for Gabe, for your whole family. Uh, you guys get better, and, and the many, many others. And, and I think I, I left Josh Gregg off this list. If I did, Josh, I apologize. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it was on there. It just slipped in my mind. So pray for the Gregg family. Uh, we love you guys. Hey, we're going to pray, and then we're going to ask the Lord to give us strength to make it through the rest of the week. Would you do that? Thanks for praying for us uh, as we pray for you. Till the next time, be faithful. Father, we love you. Thank you that you have grace and mercy. Thank you for the Lamb who overcame, for the blessings. And God, when we get to heaven, what we're going to see, but the worship we're going to get to experience. They fell down on their faces before the Lamb of God. Oh, God, help us to practice and prepare now in preparation for that moment when we'll see you. Lord, thank you for this great book. We thank you for the historical setting that it was set in, but also for the, the reality of the revelation that's affecting us even today. So, Lord, we give you the high and holy praise. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week.